Hey bot builders, Matthew here at BotPress and today I'll be teaching you how to create a simple restaurant AI chatbot that will be used to create reservations, uh, modify slash view existing reservations, cancel reservations and answer questions about a fixed menu. Uh, additionally, this chatbot will be integrated onto our SendGrid integration so that it could send users emails. Moreover, it will be integrated onto WhatsApp using our WhatsApp integration. Now, it is imperative to note that this video will not teach you how to integrate your bot onto WhatsApp or onto SendGrid. However, there will be, exist there will be already existing resources and existing videos in the description below to teach you how to do so. So please check those out before watching this video. So this, this section of this, of this restaurant AI chatbot will be split into two videos. So the first video, which is this one, will be a live demo and a live overview as to how this bot works. And then the second video will be pure bot building, showing you how the bot was made from start to finish from scratch. So for this video, let's see how it works. So we have this table here, I called it reservation table. And basically, as you can see, it is currently empty. So let's go to WhatsApp and talk to our bot. So let's say hi. And so the bot says, howdy, welcome to Bot Resto. That's our, that's the name of our, rest of our fictional restaurant for, t for today. The yummiest restaurant in the Western Hemisphere. And so, of course, the bot's just recapping what I had just said. So we can make a reservation, we can view or modify an existing reservation, we can cancel, or we can learn about the menu, which I have fed to the bot. And I'll explain how that works in the next video. So let's talk to it. Now, you don't necessarily need to write make a new reservation. You don't need to write word for word what this says. The bot should understand what you're trying to infer. So let me give you an example. I want a table. We know that this should mean make a new reservation. Let's see if the bot picks that up. And so the bot says, what's your email? So I'm going to give in my email. This is for SendGrid purposes so that you can get the email with your confirmation number and whatnot. So let's just make sure that's the right email. Okay. And now it's going to ask you the date and time. Once again, there's no specific format for this. You don't, you could literally just say Monday 7 p.m. and it should pick this up and convert it into proper time. Or you can just say, you know, December 30th, 19 o'clock. Or for our purposes, we'll just say December 30th, 7 p.m. It should be able to pick this up. And the number of people is uh, two. And so. It should now be saying that, yes, we got a confirmation email and now it's asking if there's anything else that we'd like to do. First off, let's look at the table. Let's refresh. We should be seeing a new entry in our table with a new, um, with a new ID number. So as you can see, it has an ID number of one. We have our email, our date and time, our party size of two. As you can see, it was converted to proper formatting for Zulu time. We have 19 o'clock, which is 7 p.m., December 30th, 2024, the current date and year. And as you can see, I got an email in my inbox telling me that my reservation confirmation is number one, uh, telling me that I should arrive 10 minutes early. That's something that I added. I'll show you about it later. And we look forward to having you. And all the data is here, the date and time, the party size. Okay. But now I got some new info. I want to modify my order or rather my reservation. So let me modify this. So let me tell the bot that I want to modify my reservation. So it says, please provide your confirmation number. However, I cannot remember if my confirmation number was 10 or one. So let me just put 10 because I think it's that one. The confirmation number 10 does not exist in our records. Oh, I remember now, it was one. So let me put one and see what the bot has to say about that. And so it says, okay, this number was valid. Now, of course, this isn't meant to be a bot that should be put into production. Of course, you should not have your confirmation numbers as the row indices, as I've done here, right? The index of the row is the confirmation number. From a realistic standpoint, you would probably have a random number generator that you put in, a, in an execute code card, which I could explain in the next video, in which you 
you generate a random number and you check if that number already exists in the system. And if it doesn't, then you give it to the user so that users cannot modify other users' uh, reservation details. Or an even safer method would be to allow to only allow users to to conf to modify reservations by confirming it within their email address, right? So of course this is a very basic bot. It ha bot. It has very basic, uh, simplified uh, function functionality, and it and it's meant to be built upon rather than strictly copied and used. So once again, let's see what happens here. So the confirmation number one is valid. So you can change the date, time, party, size. So let's say, okay, so I got a new friend to join us. However, right, you can speak how you want to the bot, of course. However, they can only make it for 8 p.m. Please add one to party size and change time to 8 p.m. And so let's see what the bot has to say about that. So your res your reservation has been successfully updated. The new party size is three and the time is 8 p.m. Let's go take a look at our database. And so as you can see, we have 20 o'clock, which is 8 p.m. And our party size is three and it's been updated just moments ago. So the bot has successfully updated it. Now take me back to the main menu. I have nothing else that I want to change. So it took me back to the main menu. I want to cancel my reservation because I want to take my business elsewhere. So let me say cancel a reservation. Now it's going to say please provide a confirmation number. Same as before. So I'll just put one again. I won't show what happens if you put an invalid one because we've already seen it. It should ask you if you're sure about your choice now. Yeah, so are you sure do you want to cancel it? So I'll say yes, I'm sure. I replied to the bot directly. And it's going to say, okay, your reservation has been successfully canceled. We hope to see you another time. Let's make sure my reservation was deleted from the table. It's gone. Okay, so now I'm going to say take me back to the main menu because You could say that however you like. I like to say it as take me back to main menu, but you could say it as take me back to the beginning or take me back to initial choices or go back to menu and it should still work. Um, so I like this bot. He's nice to me. Let me at least hear him out. Let me hear about his menu. So tell me about the restaurant menu. Even though I'm not eating there anymore, let me hear about it. So now it's going to search within its knowledge database and grab the menu that I fed it. And so the menu that I fed it can be found here. It's a PDF and it's basically a very, very simple PDF. It just, it's, it contains a bunch of Italian uh, dishes. So uh, drinks, food, appetizers, etc. I'll go over that in the next video. I'll even show how I formatted it. It could be in any format, of course, but I formatted it this way. And so basically the bot says, welcome to bot, res uh, bot Resto. Here's a delightful overview of our menu. Each dish is crafted with care, highlighting fresh ingredients and authentic flavors, et cetera, et cetera. Let me ask it some simple questions like, hmm, okay, I'm gluten-free, I'm short on cash. So tell me the cheapest uh, gluten-free dessert option. I mean, you can already see it here. It's gonna be panna cotta, but I'm still gonna ask it anyways to see if it can can understand what I'm trying to ask. And so of course the cheapest gluten-free dessert option is that. Now let me say, okay, so I want a luxurious experience. What is the, uh, or give me the most luxurious main dish and alcoholic beverage, because I did feed it um, alcoholic beverages um, within its database. So give me the most luxurious main dish and alcoholic beverage combo. And let's see what it says. And so it's going to tell me that it's going to recommend the Osobuco, which is braised veal priced at $40 and paired with our house white wine at $30. I don't understand what osobuco is. I've never eaten at an Italian restaurant before, so I'm gonna say, 
can you give me an explanation of Osobuco? And moreover, I'm not very good at math. So 40 plus 30 is hard for me. So I'm going to ask the bot, moreover, can you tell me what the total price is? Of course, we know that this is 70, but we're going to see if the bot can figure that out. And so the bot is going to tell me that the total price is a combination of $70. And it's going to explain to me that it is a, a classic Italian dish with braised veal shanks cooked slowly with vegetables, white wine, etc. This is correct. And so now I'm happy with the menu. I want to go back. Take me back to the main menu. Take me back. And so I'm going to say, well, I'm done here, let's end our conversation. So end conversation. And that's it, the conversation should be ended there. And I can restart it whenever with just a simple hi. And that's a general overview of the bot. Now, of course, there's areas to expand upon, areas to, to research upon. So for instance, some ideas could be, well, fixing the confirmation number. So that it's not based off row indices. Um, another area of future development could be adding a review system, maybe to leave reviews for the restaurant using a bot. Another way could be placing orders. So we're placing reservations right now, but what if I want to place orders for food? And another way could be instead of feeding it a database of your menu, you could possibly feed it a condensed uh, JSON of your restaurant layout so that people can have easier time with um, placing reservations on tables that fit their needs. So for instance, let's say I'm an older individual. I do not want to sit next to uh, loud music with speakers and I do not want to sit at a table with high chairs. So in my, in my database, I'll have, I'll have different tables with their different uh, specifications. And I'll, and you can also tell how far certain tables are from, let's say a window if someone wants to sit next to a window or how far they are from the speakers. And so basically another way that you could expand upon this is adding specifications to the reservations. Maybe you can have the bot ask for a description of what kind of table they would like. Maybe a more romantic setting next to, next to a window. Maybe uh, a high chair table next to the bar or a table that's further away from speakers. Either way, this is a very simple bot. However, there is much, much room for expansion and development and even more integrations. So on the next episode, I will show you how to actually build this from scratch and talk a little bit more about these developments. Thank you for watching.